Hello everyone, my name is Yordan Olszewski and uh, my day job is to run a games company called Sticky Pixels and uh, I'd like to talk to you about art. In fact, specifically about the question of what would happen if a caveman walked into Tate Modern today? <laughs> if he went into the Tate today, Tate Modern for example, then he would be amazed by the people and the aesthetics and the devices we have in our hands, but he would know what he's supposed to do. He would know he's supposed to look at the art on the walls because his cave had exactly something like that. This is actually an example of uh, fantastic cave art from about 14,000 years ago from Patagonia. An artist, we don't know he or she, I think this is phenomenally relevant even 40,000 years afterwards. But what's really interesting is the interface. This is art that lives on a wall. And in many respects, the Tate today is nothing but a giant cave with artworks on the walls, much like this cave here in Patagonia. Now, I'm not suggesting there's any problem with art itself. We love art, but I'm just wondering if this ancient interface could be improved and could be done much better. I believe the physical gallery model, the wall in a cave, falls short on several dimensions. For collections, this shows an impossible bandwidth issue. Most museums can only display 10% of their collections. They're like a huge iceberg. 90% of all these great artworks are forever underwater, never to see the light of day. How would they choose which tenth of their collection to actually show people? Most collections have no data about their visitors. They know how many people walk through the door, that's easy, but they have no idea about the demographics or what they like or what they didn't like. The art on display is controlled by an establishment of curators and dealers and art collectors that seem to know better what the public wants and for the moment it's their call to make. How do they make decisions? Do they ask their audiences? I'll let you answer this question yourself. There is no other industry where the top is so rigidly controlled and the tail is so, so very long. For artists, um, their artwork is a little bit like their children. They're proud of them, they want to show them to everybody they can. But the problem is that unlike real children, which are largely cute and can be, you know, you could easily relate to them, art is not. Art is incredibly individual. If we took the best unknown artwork, which, you know, whatever that is, and showed it to 100 people, maybe one or two would actually get it and connect with it, whereas the other 99, 98 people would just be polite about that. It makes artists incredibly frustrated, but also makes people feel like they don't get it, like it's their fault. It's not. This is essentially a matchmaking problem, or perhaps an opportunity, as we like to think of it. In summary, art as an industry has got the longest of the long tail. It is built like a massive pyramid. It's like incredibly rigid, with success only to the few at the very, very top, whereas everybody else is forever left emerging. What would a solution look like? Well, for a start, it's not going to be a website, and it's not going to be another museum. What it will be is it will be data-driven. Okay, we have to be smarter about which art we show to whom and when. Okay, this is essentially a matchmaking problem. It's a tough one, but I believe not impossible. If we look at Amazon, they've been doing it for books for years. Movies, games, music, everything is being discoverable and there's no reason art shouldn't be like that too. Secondly, it needs to be engaging. We need to convince the public, after years of rigid and structured art establishment, that their opinion counts. Their individual opinion might be different from me or yours or everybody. Everybody's got a valid opinion, not just the guy who sits at the tape. I believe we're on the cusp of a golden age in art. A new age of participation and appreciation by many more people than ever before who will actually all feel welcome and actually enjoy that. If you think about it, art today is much like how manuscripts were before the invention of print. Think about it. There were a few originals hidden away where one had to go on a pilgrimage to even see. And even then, only a tiny select few could actually decode or understand. And then, of course, one German guy with one invention changed the history of the world. Gutenberg changed all that by inventing the printing press and making the world literate. To draw a more recent comparison, the record industry used to be run by a group of highly paid executives that forced their taste on the public. Those days are over. And the public and music are so much better for it. I believe something very similar is going to happen with art. Art has managed to fight this Gutenberg moment for the last 500 years. And you know what? You know what happens when you fight progress for this long? You get a Napster moment. <laughs>